people get stuck at that first step where they're like, okay, I need to pick a market and they pull out the whole U S map and they're like, well, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> where do I start? So how did you, cause that talk about don't skimp over. I'm sure that was a huge process. How did you narrow it down to focus on just that one market? And then within that market to pick that one property. So that also began with kind of like what I wanted out of my like end state goal. Right. And so I wanted a place that would, that was not only performing well, but was projected to perform well because I wanted to be in the long-term rental space. I wanted to build a passive income so that I could then have the freedom to leave my job or stay or do whatever I wanted, you know? And so to me, that meant like diversification of employers. If people were talking about a recession, even two years ago, you know, more than two years ago. And so I was like, if there is one, like I need to make sure that it's not all like one type of manufacturing. Otherwise it, I could be screwed, you know? And so um, making sure it was diversified, making sure that people were going there for different reasons at different age ranges. Like I didn't just, I grew up in Florida and I didn't want to invest in, in um, strictly an environment like the town that I grew up in because that was very resort, like um, hospitality discretionary income based. You know, if there's a recession that might get hit. So like, I just, I just wanted to be diversified so that I could kind of ride out whatever happened. Um, and so I looked at a bunch of different cities, like I'm in finance. I love numbers. I picked like different um, statistics from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics and compared them all to each other and the U.S. national average. And Indiana was one of, Indianapolis was one of the places that was performing very well against the, the economic average of the entire country. You know, and then it just kind of came down to, okay, it's doing well, but so is like Austin. So are other places that are much higher priced, you know? So like, that's when like the arbitrage opportunity of price to rent um, mortgage price, housing prices to what you could rent the house for. That's when that came into play. So trying to find a place where I could still cash flow positively on these smaller units, because I'm still kind of in the smaller residential space. Right. Because then that, right, because that goes back to your goal of yes. creating that cash flow. Makes exactly. sense. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I chose my market. And then um, this was also the challenging part, figuring out where in the city you wanted to, I wanted to invest. You know, there's so many spots. So I did, I did a bunch of research on the different suburbs. And um, there's like one specific county where there are two towns that have been named like in Forbes and like Money Magazine as like best places in America to live. Now, obviously there's high demand in those, in those towns. I, it's, there's no arbitrage opportunity there because everybody wants to live there. But if you go to another town in that same county, the same school districts, you know, same crime, same overall kind of population, just slightly less affluent, you can find similar tenant types but in an area where you can still make money, you know? So that was, I literally, like my first five doors, I bought all when I was in Boston, all in this one town. <laughs> Not great for diversification, but it got me started. <laughs> it's like finding a needle in a haystack. You gotta like keep yeah. digging. But it's so worth it, you know? The time's gonna pass anyway. What are you gonna do in that time to make your life better, so? That's so true. So you did that first deal and it was, uh, it, it sounded like it was two houses on one lot. Is that sort of Kinda, the, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 exactly. So it was like one main house and then this tiny, like completely dilapidated carriage house that I've put back together and I've turned into an Airbnb because it's one of those like things that's very weirdly built. And so I'm like, who would want to live here long-term? No one. <laughs> so <laughs> I turned that into an Airbnb and it's been doing pretty well that way. Mm -hmm. 